In Skyward Sword, saving game progress typically happens at bird statues, whether that be at an overworld statue which allows you to fly back to the sky, or a dungeon statue that allows you to quickly exit the dungeon. These statues are used heavily in Skyward Sword speedrunning, mostly as a means of doing back-in-time related glitches, and sometimes as a means of cutting out backtracking. However, one of these statues has a speedrunning potential that most players probably don't realize. So today, I'd like to take some time to discuss the overworld bird statue in the Fire Sanctuary of Skyward Sword. The Fire Sanctuary is the second-to-last dungeon in Skyward Sword's main progression, and contains the Magma Myths as its dungeon item. The path through the Fire Sanctuary is fairly linear, and mimics the find the dungeon item, find the boss key, go beat the boss formula that most traditional Zelda dungeons use. While the current speedrun route for this dungeon mostly follows this linearity, there are a few neat tricks. The biggest of which is a bit warp that skips roughly the third quarter of the dungeon. For the uninitiated, a bit warp is a technique which allows the player to take specific coordinates from the Skyloft map and apply them to Link on a different map through the use of a glitch known as Back in Time. In the Fire Sanctuary, this is useful for teleporting Link to a location where he can jump directly into the mouth of the Sleeping One, effectively skipping everything between obtaining the Magma Mitts and jumping into this mouth. This is already quite a good skip, but there may be potential for something much greater. A huge part of the Fire Sanctuary is this gigantic outdoor valley of lava, above which lie several bridges that the player must cross as they progress through the dungeon. The game even shows us that this room is somewhat of a hub area, as when we first enter it, the camera pans all the way across to show us the boss door, and also gets us a glimpse of the bird statue which is in front of it. Since Link is normally very far away though, the game only loads what is absolutely necessary on this part of the map to save memory and make it look visually continuous when viewed from the earlier crossings. As such, most of the actors normally on this part of the map, as well as some textures which wouldn't be viewable, are not loaded. It's only when the player accesses the paths directly connected to the boss door does this part of the map appear to load in full. However, we notice that when transitioning to this final part of the dungeon, we go through a fade-out transition before appearing there. Unlike the sand ship where fade-out transitions indicate a layer change, the fade-out transitions in the fire sanctuary indicate an entire map change. As a whole, the fire sanctuary is split up into two maps. The first map, which we'll call the outer map, handles the first room of the dungeon along with all the rooms which surround the boss door. The second map, which we'll call the inner map, handles everything in between the defined rooms of the outer map. What this means is that when we see the boss door area from the bridges on the inner map, what we're looking at is not the same area which we normally access on the outer map. And by extension, the bird statue we see is not the same bird statue that we interact with on the outer map. It's a different statue on a different map. And this statue has a rather confounding property that we can experience if we interact with it. Normally, you can soar to the sky with an overworld bird statue, but the statue we see from the inner map does not follow this rule. Instead, selecting that you want to go back to the sky will send you to the Fire Sanctuary boss room, effectively performing a Fire Sanctuary boss key skip. This is known as Wrong Warping in Skyward Sword, and there are actually a number of out-of-bounds bird statues throughout the game that can send you to alternate maps. If you wish to see all the potential Wrong Warps, there is a link in the description. Going back to the Fire Sanctuary, though, it seems like it would be much faster to simply Wrong Warp to the boss room, instead of going to all the trouble of getting the boss key. And that would be true if we could somehow access the statue from the defined locations of the inner map. This is where things get sad. While it may seem like a stretch that we'd be able to somehow get to the bird statue from one of the bridges on the inner map, this is actually a lot closer than you might think. So close, in fact, that Skyward Sword is practically dangling this skip over our heads just out of reach. 
The first method in which this skip almost works is by getting onto the northernmost broken pillar on the bridge just south of the walkway in front of the bird statue. This pillar is only reachable by first performing the bit warp mentioned earlier and then jumping down to it. Once we're here, we can see that there is a bit of a gap between this pillar and the walkway, and it's unfortunately a little too far for Link to jump across, no matter what technique he uses. Not being able to jump across gaps like this is a pretty common theme in Skyward Sword glitch hunting, and as such is not unique to this situation. But it is frustrating that Skyward Sword is one of the only 3D Zelda games which lacks the ability to cross slightly larger than normal gaps, for the most part. Now, I'm going to put an asterisk next to that statement because yes, Skyward Sword does have the extended blow technique, which at first glance seems like an obvious solution for crossing this small gap. However, the extended blow would not work in our favor here, even if it were possible to perform, as the extended blow will always throw Link in the direction of a map's origin point, which, in the Fire Sanctuary, is located here on the opposite side of the room compared to the boss door. Our second almost-but-not-quite situation has to do with the location that we normally bit-warp to in the Fire Sanctuary. When executing this bit warp, it looks as if Link falls directly onto this platform from a little ways above it. However, Link spawns in a bit higher than we can notice due to the fade-out transition that takes place. Link is actually pretty high in the ceiling when he first loads in, and just inside the ceiling is a portion of out-of-bounds collision that Link has the potential to stand on. From this collision, it is possible to run around and eventually make it to the bird statue to perform the wrong warp. Unfortunately, the potential bit warping coordinates on Skyloft just barely do not intersect with the set of coordinates that would work for bit warping onto this out of bounds collision, and thus, this method does not work either. If it were possible to either cross the small gap or bit warp onto the out of bounds collision, then we would save a massive 8 minutes of time and skip the Fire Sanctuary boss key. While getting the boss key does not take 8 minutes, getting the boss key does rely on us having the magma mitts. And if we take away the boss key, we also take away our dependence on the magma mitts. This means we would only have to go through the first room of the dungeon, and then access the bird statue to complete the fire sanctuary. Skipping the magma mitts like this would be okay for the later game too, as the next time we need them, they're given back to us even if we never had them. For now though, this skip remains impossible to perform, but I hope that one day we'll solve this teasing puzzle and make wrong warping a part of Skyward Sword speedrunning. Thank you for watching, and to close off this video while simultaneously making you confused, please enjoy this nonsensical sequence of events that unfolds when you attempt to get the boss key and open up the boss door from the inner map. Goodbye, and see you all next time. Yeah!